Well, welcome to the follow-up podcast. My name is Hayden. I am the worship director here at Arbor Church, and today I'm joined by Allison Oconee, our community care pastor, Michael Solis, our children's director, and Cliff Tatama, our interim pastor and speaker from Sunday. So uh, if you took the week off, you weren't able to join us on Sunday virtually or in person, um, we celebrate our we celebrated our fifth birthday, which is a huge milestone. Um, and we got to hear a message from Cliff about uh, impossible possibilities. Right. So before we um, hop into the sermon too much, thought we would chat kind of about the setup of the sermon where we talked through um, our mission statement, our vision, our motto, our tagline, all of the um, things that you see on the website first when you go to About Us. So... Um, Can I also just say, I really, um, as you said that intro, it went through my brain. I did not plan. I wish I would have had like a little hat I could have pulled out and went, <laughs> as soon as you said our fifth birthday, yeah. I was like, I missed that moment. That's funny. <laughs> so I just want to address that. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's, it's a big, it's a big birthday to celebrate in church planning because, um, I forget the exact number, but it's a staggering number of church plants that close within the first five years. So it's like right. 73%. It's really, it's really, really high. high. Yep. So, um, so yay. One, it's a happy, it's yeah. a happy celebratory <laughs> thing, but it's also a, uh, we made it. Not saying we're out of the woods, but like, Safe. you know, we made it past the, the statistic. We're done. Yeah. <laughs> no. And also what they show in research is that after the fifth year, there's like this sharp, trajectory of growth yep. like everybody like all of a sudden flourishes and of course all of those studies were done before there was a thing called covid yeah <laughs> or 2020 Ooh. yeah so yep. um anyhow we're just super excited yeah. to reach that milestone mm -hmm. even given the challenges yeah of the day i think i think when we celebrate our fourth birthday it was very <laughs> It was in a closet <laughs> together in the back we, of the church. I literally yeah. put out the most low key. Like there was yeah. like a picture, just really super low key, no caption. Yeah. We shared a little cupcake. Yeah, exactly. Well, Happy I think birthday, it, it was tough because I think all of us had that statistic in the back of our mind of let's make it to five. Let's make it to five. And, and then, we just had the fire licking at our heels, too, from 2020. Yep. So That's exactly what I'm saying yeah. is... Yeah. Is our fourth birthday, it was like, man, we still have a challenging year ahead of us. And <laughs> by the grace of God, we got to celebrate our fifth birthday on Sunday, which is amazing. Yeah, it is amazing. Re I, yeah, I, I feel like it's something that we have to take a step back and just... Um, take a breath. Exactly. Because I think we all imagined our fifth birthday as like, this would be, you know, where we bust out all these crazy things and we go the whole nine yards. But in reality, it's like, oh, man... <laughs> Okay. Our fifth birthday snuck up on us. I want to say also, if if anyone's listening knows Denise Gross, that yes. cake she made that off the was hook. amazing. Holy the hook. guacamole! Yeah, mm -hmm. it was amazing. So cool. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And I just I just got to put it out there for all anyone who will hear it. That was so cool. And Denise, if you're so hearing, cool. thank you. Yeah, yeah. It was so was, cool. It was pretty pretty yeah. intense. Shout outs too. Mm -hmm. I want to shout out CJ, which is funny because last week, I think you remember at the beginning of the week, I was like, wow, the birthday feels heavy to me for yeah. some reason because we're still somewhat in an uphill climb. Yeah. And uh, anyhow, I talked with CJ later in the week because I was stressed. I have to communicate uplifting feelings via email, yeah. <laughs> social media, and I wasn't feeling it yet. Yeah. And she said, you have to realize, where would we be without Arbor? Like, we wouldn't even know one another. Yeah. It, um, you know, people who have ministry here wouldn't have even had a chance to have ministry, yeah. you know, given any other circumstance. And she's just listed off all that God has been doing here. Mm -hmm. And it helped reframe for me like, oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. OK, let's mm -hmm. celebrate what God's doing. Yeah, not, that's good. Not so much like, hey, what how hard does the staff work or anything right. like that? Mm -hmm. It's not about that. Mm -hmm. It's about like God. God mm -hmm. has done great things here. Yeah. yeah good job, CJ. Yeah. So she, awesome. she helped reframe. That's awesome. Any other shout outs that we need to do? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I feel like it's, you could go through and thank everybody, right? Yeah. Oh, and that's so true every Sunday and throughout the year that every one of the volunteers and even, 
even the people who show up and don't have a volunteer responsibility that Sunday step up in big ways. So I can think of, you know, someone like Hans who was not scheduled but hopped in the back and video switched because oh, he was awesome. like, I'm here. So, so I'll, I'll video switch for us. Um, so there's just tons of people who I feel like have stepped yeah. up and um, it's not an excuse for us not to shout them out. It's just <laughs> I feel like we've been shown this year that uh, people are stepping up more than we can shout out in uh in a podcast or on sunday mornings so yeah and i appreciate the effort because for them it's an uphill climb too they're oh 100 re- you know th- they're also climbing out of a pandemic and dealing with all that goes on in their own industries and their own homes and all that kind of stuff yeah. so yeah. it's been very much a group effort this year it, oh so for good. sure well I feel like we should probably talk about the message because that's what this podcast is is meant to be. Um, Cliff, you, I want to say it was last Monday, We you suggested maybe we do um, a one-off, which we just refer to one-offs as messages that are not a part of a series, but maybe something um, that topically fits in the schedule. So um, we were going to hear from Brian on Sunday. He was going to continue Romans 8. Um, but we just decided to shift that forward an extra week so we could talk about um, something that has to do with our fifth birthday. And Cliff, yeah. you had a message, um, maybe not ready to go, but you were thinking about it, uh, impossible possibilities. And then you spent the week working on that. I got a couple manuscripts during the week. Um, and I just want to, let's just hop into <laughs> yeah. that conversation. So, <laughs> okay. I think, you know... Um, yeah, so we decided to shift it up, and originally we ended up tying it back into Romans 8. That was not yeah. the intent when we talked about it on Monday. Uh, but my thought was, you know, we just got done talking about how tough it has been, mm-hmm. you know, as well, we're kind of viewing it as, man, we've made it for five years. It's an awesome thing. Mm-hmm. And I think that uh, that for me, as we were celebrating that, as we thought about celebrating it, to think about, okay, no, we, it's not just a survivor thing. We've got God on our side. So now let's go let's go do what God's called us to do. And maybe if we step back and look at this and recognize his hand in things over the last five years, then we see that he, you know, God always works with the remnant again and again, when things went sideways, God would, would, would capture a remnant of people, Mm -hmm. a small group of people. And with them, he would do miraculous things. And so as I was thinking about Arbor, I thought, could it be that, that, Everything that we have gone through, God has mm-hmm. actually been preparing us for something much greater than the best we've ever seen or done. Mm-hmm. And that can only happen if if he's the one who directs it and leads it. And if we all, as a, his body, his, his remnant, mm-hmm. if we are all on that page saying, yes, God, we want you to do that, and we want to participate. So yeah. we're going to pray for you to accomplish things that are much greater than us or that, that we could possibly do ourselves. So what does that look like? I have no idea. Mm -hmm. So that's when I said, okay, but I know how he's done that. So let's just open up the word, take one of the examples where he's done that, and then apply that to ourselves. Mm -hmm. So that's how we got started and where we wound up. Mm -hmm. Before we go too far into into the sermon, I just got to say, I didn't even think about the perils because I didn't know about what CJ told you, but what CJ told you to kind of lighten the load about reflecting on, hey, the, look at what God's done and what was coming in the message. I, I'm sure she didn't see your manuscript that you sent and how cool that is right. that for Arbor's birthday, right. that was the the sermon that came about. It's like, no, look what can happen when, when we turn to God in this process. And that is that exactly mm-hmm. what CJ said to you. And I think mm-hmm. that's awesome. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So it is. Yeah. Yeah, it is. How quickly we forget that, you know, <laughs> yeah. that yeah. it's not human effort, you know. <laughs> Uh, yeah, it's the verse, not by might, not by power, but by my spirit. That's right. It's like, okay, well, it, whatever is good here and worthy of praise is because it's right. God. Right. right. Yeah. Yeah. So that's, I think, where, where as I was thinking about the message, and then as I mentioned um, afterwards, I think, you know, I started looking at Gideon and saw these different principles that would apply to us. And I just thought, man, some of these really hit me where I'm going oh, I got to do better at that piece or that piece. Mm-hmm. The overall piece just being let God lead the way. And that's mm-hmm. that's how he makes the impossible possible. Mm-hmm. But um, and, then, and then when I started looking at 
at Scripture and forming Scripture on that and trying to back it up with more Scripture, that's when I kind of geeked out on it. I, and, and I said, and I, and I said, man, you know, the one thing I keep telling people that when, when I teach preaching classes is don't overcomplicate it. And when I got done Sunday, I thought, boy, did I ever <laughs> step in that for myself? Holy buckets. I could have just stuck out. with Gideon. Threw yeah, I out. did. <laughs> when I saw that Romans 8 actually had a verse that, that fulfilled, that keyed in on every one of those principles, I just went, oh, I can't not do this. Right. But, and then cool. when I got done with it, I thought, oh, I think that made it more muddy than it should have. <laughs> My thoughts. Well, I thought it was an interesting framework that you went with, right? Because you had Matthew 28, correct? Then you had Acts 1, and then you had um, Romans 8, and then you went back to, uh, was it Judges? Yeah, to Gideon. Yeah, Judges 6 yeah, to, to Gideon. 8. Chapter. Yeah. Super yeah. interesting because, you know, we've been in a exegetical series of... Um, Romans, where we just go verse by verse, and then to kind of have more of a topical sermon where you have four different vignettes from the Bible, right? You have Matthew 28, which um, that's not the Great Commission, is it? Yes, it is. Oh, it is. Okay. Yeah. So then Acts 1 is uh, Jesus before he ascends, correct? Right. Okay. And then um, Romans 8, which we've been in, and then you have the story of Gideon, which is, you know, one of the most quoted when it talks about having this huge task ahead of you. Um, what kind of inspired you to go with, you know, two stories from Jesus, one from Paul and Romans, and then the yeah. famous story of Gideon? I was inspired to use Gideon because I thought that really, ref- that was a reflection to me of Arbor, mm-hmm. of, of, you know, we, we look at it and we go, oh, we've got, okay, the team we've got, you know, is pretty good. And we got, yep. and, and then God goes, yeah, no, not that, not that, not that. And that. I'm going to pair it back. Yeah, I'm going to pair it back. And, uh, and, and then, but just seeing how he did that with Gideon and the principles that Gideon had to be willing to step into believing God. So that's where I really started from it. And, um, and then just after I had, after I'd, written that piece. That was the piece that I, that as we were talking about it on Monday, literally came to me as we were talking about it on Monday. And I thought, oh, that could be so fun and so Mm -hmm. positive. And I think we um, have to reach. (laughs) That was good. Please silence your Uh, cell phones before we start recording the podcast. (laughs) It's a motorcycle taking off. Uh, (laughs) There. I, I, you know, and I think um, as I got, uh, that part of it went pretty quickly, but then I just started thinking about you know, are people going to feel like, does the New Testament um, buttress that? Does it support that? Mm. And so yeah. that's where, that's and that's where I, I said I started geeking out because, um, mm-hmm. well, yeah, it does. As a matter of fact, here are the different places it does. So mm-hmm. you could literally support every one of those principles just through the words of Jesus. Mm-hmm. And so I kind of did that, the next piece. And then as I was thinking about Romans 8 and that we've been doing that, I thought, it was just kind of a curiosity thing. I wonder if, mm-hmm. and then I started looking at rereading Romans 8. I kind of been reading that chapter off and on anyway as we've been going through it. And then I just saw these scriptures just starting to pull out mm-hmm. and support every one of those. And I thought, oh, I can't not do this. And then <laughs> when I got done, I went, mm-hmm. okay, somehow we got to mash this together and make it shorter because I think I'm at about 40 minutes now. And uh, <laughs> so anyway, that's why you got more than one. And yeah. that's why in the final one, yeah. I didn't actually include the scripture from Matthew and Acts mm-hmm. because I was trying to tighten it up. Mm-hmm. You could have done two weeks I, and yeah, Brian we, would have been like, have. sure. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Brian's so. gonna have one heck of a message on Sunday, having two weeks. Of, oh man, uh, if it if it doesn't light things up, we're gonna have to have a conversation. Aren't yeah, we? exactly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, he's had this prep, time, but I think he's only got verses to work with, right, or something. Yeah, it's a really miniature little passage. He's. Is I think so. But I think five, it's like chock oh, full. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. He'll be fine. He'll be fine. He'll be great. It's Romans. It's, it's dense. all about the spirit groaning for us, so he yeah. could go into great. You could just have Detail a moment of that. silence. Yes. Yeah. Just <laughs> yes. fill it, you know. I'm counting yeah. on that. <laughs> so now that we're officially into the uh, sermon recap and more of a deep dive, um, what was the inspiration for starting out the message with our mission, vision, um, motto, and tagline? Yeah, I think because 
I wanted to, it's our fifth birthday. Let's remember yeah. where we've come from and who we are. Mm-hmm. And we have, honestly, I think that uh, we did a great job last year for a little while when we went through the values and those mm-hmm. kinds of things. But, but as we were talking about it, even as a staff, and got to thinking about how many people who come to Arbor could actually repeat our mission statement, which is so simple. Mm-hmm. It's just people helping people find and follow Jesus. Mm-hmm. And we thought, and you know what? We thought, you know what? I'll bet a bunch of them don't even know that. Mm-hmm. So it just seemed appropriate on our birthday to bring that back out and remind people and say, this really is what we're about. Yeah. And now we're going to ask God to supernaturally charge mm-hmm. that, us yeah. doing that. Who yeah. we are. Well, and I think that for the past year and some change, it's been, um, <laughs> our mission has been more Arbor helping Arbor, you know, heal and, and uh, you know, maybe not restart, but it's been we've been really focused intentionally. It hasn't it's not a bad thing that we've been so internally focused because we've had these big wounds um, and something that we're excited about as a staff um, and hopefully the the congregation feels the same way is moving forward out of this year starting in 2022 is is a bigger shift in focus to Arbor helping the surrounding community yes. right. So I think it was also helpful to remind people of. This last year, we've been more internally focused and trying to heal um, the internal wounds, but that's not going to be the case in 2022. Not meaning if you are still hurting, we're not going to help you, but the church is focused as a as a whole is is being more externally focused. No healing for you. Exactly. If you're not healed, <laughs> I haven't gotten a bite it's not going to get now. any better. Yeah. <laughs> There's the door. No. Yeah. No. I think I think what people will be surprised to know too is that the Lord taught them so much in mm-hmm. it. So, so cool. um as we were healing, forgiving, yeah. re-strengthening and establishing, yeah. those are things that we bring out to the community, right? Yeah. And that we're coming from a position of strength. So mm-hmm. even though it did seem, uh, I don't know, anti-mission to be mm-hmm. working more within the walls here, mm-hmm. uh, even that is serving us to, yeah. to serve better outside the walls. Well, I think about it, because I've heard so many people come up and, and ask, you know, why aren't we doing this? Or why haven't we gotten to this? Or, you know, we used to do this. Why aren't we doing this anymore? And it's, I think it's true within the church, but also in your own life. If there's, if there's big gaping holes, you can't go out and help other people, right? If, if I've got this big issue that is overwhelming and, and owning everything that I do, I can't possibly go out and help someone else when there's this big issue going on here. And I think that's where the church has been at is, We've got some some big, maybe not issues, but wounds that we have to heal before we can even think about going out in and serving, um, you know, the lost and the broken and the people that need to find Jesus. If we are still dealing with, you know, trust issues and and um, you know, we we have these big hurts from previous leadership failures, and and not only that, but when you do heal from things like that you are now equipped to help others who have gone through yeah. challenging right. times. That's what I was trying to say, yeah. is that the work that they are doing here, exactly. healing, yeah. is the very thing that will help them so cool. be healers. Yeah. Yeah. Here's, yeah. here's another interesting thing about that, and I think it kind of parallels Gideon's deal in a way, mm-hmm. uh, in that um, when my, my mom used to be a counselor in um, family career, et cetera, and she would counsel people um, you know, who were going through very difficult things. And uh, would have been a person who would have been del- would have been great to have her part of Arbor as we were going through this, so people could talk to her and so forth. But I remember talking to her one time about this lady that she had been counseling for some time, and they they get the she'd gotten quite close, and then all of a sudden I didn't see her for a while. And I asked my mom where's she at, and 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 she I said I haven't seen her, and she said oh yeah no she's doing so much better, and I said uh, yeah but she was like you were like her best friend, and she said yeah, and what happens is. Often when people get healed of something that was very painful for them, then um, then they don't want to stay around what brings that memory back. Yeah. So it's okay for me when they move on because I recognize that it's because they're healed that they are moving on. And so it's 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 easy for me to let go of them. And I and I and I thought, wow, 
your profession sucks, man. <laughs> you know, I mean, you invest all like this into these people. Kids. Yeah, right. well, so it is like raising kids. Leave. Yes, I raise, yeah. you, I raise to you to leave. Yeah. Why do yeah. healthy things have to be hard? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Fill me yeah. On that. But I, but I think yeah. about that as it relates to us because I think of what what was Gideon feeling like. Particularly when those 9,700, these are the ones who wanted to, who seemed to want to stay. Well, mm-hmm. you made a point of that that stuck with me. You said that when those people left, um, he didn't like try and renegotiate or have a mm-hmm. little exit interview and like, can I help you change your mind? Right. Or how can I like bend so that you're willing to stay? He just was like, okay, bye bye. You know, yeah. <laughs> bless you on your way. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it, and then he worked with who was left That's over. That's right. Now watch this because we didn't talk about this on Sunday because we didn't have a chance to because uh, I was geeking out. But, um, <laughs> but so those 9,700 and I'm sure some of the other 22,000 that went home because they were uncomfortable or afraid or, or uh, faint hearted or whatever the reasons. Mm-hmm. When God used the 300 to route that army and send it, send it on its way, the message then was sent out to to all of Israel. They're on the run. We need help. Just going out and basically, basically whip getting the victory party right. Basically, just knocking the, the, them out and, and picking up the stuff that all the the stuff that's going to be left over. And many of those same people came back and finished chasing the enemy out of the country. Huh. Wow. Okay, uh-huh. when you shared that part of the sermon, I just I, I took notes here because I was like, man, I wish there was a way I could interject my thoughts sometimes, like where we almost Brian hates a panel for a sermon, but it's like, oh, oh, what if, what if this? <laughs> uh, I I couldn't help but think you have thirty two thousand, and you were saying it's still woefully outnumbered at thirty two thousand. Yes. yes, if you have fear, if you're at all have any issues. And 22,000 go away. And now I have to imagine the ones that are left over going, well, I didn't have fear. But uh, I wait a second. pretty good a minute ago. <laughs> and, then, and then of the 10,000, God's test was for those who stick their face in the water, right? get rid of them. But the ones who use a cup, and I couldn't help but imagine the guys who stuck their face in the water to drink were probably like the w- warrior bulldog guys who, like I had this vision of a guy sticking his head in the water and whipping it out. And yeah, <laughs> like, I was like, that's probably who drinks with their face in the water. <laughs> and, and the guy who's using the cup has probably got his finger up, like just like a dainty thing. And, and, oh, and, yes. Funny. Gideon says, okay, you guys go away. And, and the other guys are like, wait, what? Wait, who? <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> but, yeah. So I imagine like the last 300 were probably not the like teacup the teacup crew the was yoked. left over. <laughs> exactly. Now, see, I had the picture a bit different because they, they, they cupped the water in their hands, right? Okay. So I figured it had to be the people with the big hands. Okay. That were right. doing the cupping, man. Oh, I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. I just, actually, my <laughs> picture, my so picture, funny. my picture was actually <laughs> the, the guys who put their face down the water, they weren't, they weren't on guard already the ones who are reaching down the water and cupping it in their hands and bringing it to their mouth they're watching they're aware so they, it wasn't fear though it had no, to be yeah no, no. Just, it was a just, little bit of soldier sense yes yes right? so that's a good word for it soldier sense yeah. yeah yeah we could do a message on that soldier yeah. sense Put i like down. it Mark right. that down. Right. Okay. anyway i just i had those thoughts and i was like man i want to share that with cliff that's silly stuff yeah that's great that's funny that's funny <laughs> yeah. no never yeah. Teacup with it. Yeah. <laughs> I pick your finger up as you're drinking yeah. But you know, so so I guess part of that as I thought of it was, you know what? When the three hundred did what God told them to do and he had pared it down to them, then there became an opportunity for those who had left to re engage. Mm-hmm. And and yeah. like you We've said, like you said, Allison yep. Gideon didn't say didn't say, wait, wait, whoa, 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 let me let me try and let me tell you why you ought to stay. He didn't try to convince them to stay. He let them go. Mm-hmm. But then he invited them back mm-hmm. when the route was on. Yeah. Oh, is that I try every interview that I have is to say the welcome mat is always out for you here. So, like, even though people f- might feel called to go mm-hmm. elsewhere or, where, you know, whatever, <laughs> I want them to know the door is always open and the welcome mat is always out for you whenever. I don't mm-hmm. want them to feel like, oh, I'm so embarrassed. Mm-hmm. You know, I've changed my mind. Um, 
I feel like God must be doing something in all of that mm-hmm. movement. Although I am sad to see people go, I want to mm-hmm. make sure that they know right. the welcome mat is out. Yeah. Uh, Any time to come back. Yeah. Because yeah. things change. Mm-hmm. Things change. Yeah. So you went through, I think, about six points through seven. The, seven, seven principles. Yeah. A good number to go through. <laughs> That's um, what I thought had to be had to be the right number. Maybe. Yeah. So <laughs> when you were going, did you get those points from um, Gideon's message, or was yes. it kind of okay? No, absolutely Gideon's. Yeah. Just okay. as I read through it, thinking what's taking place here, what's taking place here, mm-hmm. what's taking place here. Okay. And then, which was cool, Matthew, Acts, and Romans all either supported or kind of augmented those points. Right. Um, where, where at in the, in the sermon writing process, did those, did you start to see the connection between Matthew acts and Romans fitting along with, uh, the story of Gideon? Yeah, it really wasn't until I had actually outlined all seven of the points. And to me, that's way too many for people to remember. Mm -hmm. And, uh, so that's why I wanted to come back with what I called the theme, the main, the main point, Mm -hmm. you know, which was impossible is possible when God leads the way. So all the rest of them fall underneath that. But some of them, I I mean, for me, uh, it allows room for people to be convicted on just one of the points and not remember five of them, but, but hopefully they'll remember the main one. Mm-hmm. If God's leading the way, then the then the impossible actually becomes possible. And then the other ones, uh, it's, it was just as I was reading the story, first thing he had to know was he had to know, he knew that he needed to need God. He couldn't do it on his own. He was scared to death, you know. And then the then the whole thing with the uh, identity, who he is, mm-hmm. and that God would see him that way. And then getting rid of the idols. Mm-hmm. So each one of these things, as I as I re- reflected them on my own life. I thought, man, those are things I have to, what am I, mm-hmm. are there things today mm. that I'm allowing to come before God, you know, and, and am, am, am I listening to his instructions, you know? And so that's kind of where all of those principles came from, that these are the things that had to take place. And then God moved supernaturally and, mm-hmm. and Gideon followed him through all of those things, allowed God to encourage him when he needed it. Mm-hmm. And and uh, and he needed it, mm-hmm. and so that's a great one for us. We've got to allow God to encourage us as Arbor that we may be the little church, but my goodness, mm-hmm. He's not a little God, so He can do what He wants to do through us. So anyway, that's that's good. so. After all those came together, Hayden, then mm-hmm. I went, huh, okay, those are just principles I pulled from this story. Does other scripture back that up? Mm-hmm. And I felt like, let's go to the New Testament for that, because yeah. people often see the two as so separate, and I, I don't, but uh, but let's just do that to make sure. And and then the, the words of Jesus started coming back on in, from Matthew 28 and Acts 1. I went, yeah, yeah, they it really fits. It's so cool. I have a question for you around the identity. I love the part well, where we're talking about the angel coming to Gideon and, and mighty man of valor or or warrior as he's hiding in fear. Right. You know, he's like, well, you, right. you got the right guy. <laughs> and, uh, and, and you had briefly touched on that identity. And, and my, my question in the moment was, where do you think it goes wrong? Because what you talked about was God creates us all as positive. Yes. We don't start out negative. So my question was, where do you think it goes wrong for us who God created in a very specific image in a, in a, in a positive light, where in that journey do you think it goes off for us, off the rails? Yeah, I think in two places. One, human nature, which is the sin nature. And two is the enemy, who does not, the one thing he doesn't want is for us to live out the identity and purpose God's given us. Yeah. So um, so it, he's actively engaged in trying to draw us to a different direction. And I think even as, and it, what it shows me is even as believers, Gideon believed in God, but even as believers, we can lose our identity mm. in who God created us to be. And so uh, to, to, uh, to go back to that and to say, Lord, what is yours for me? And let me live that. Yeah. Not, not Don't let me live out what I would tend to want to do otherwise or what I'm hearing from the enemy, you know, which is always the negative. Yeah. How do you see me, Lord? Right. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And I've actually, I've actually remember doing one time asking a guy, how does, how do you think God actually sees you? And he actually started 
coming up with some ne- the negative stuff. Well, he knows I don't keep the rules. He knows I, he knows I know. And I was, oh, hold, hold Interesting. on here. Let's go back. And then you go, go back all the way to Genesis, and you see where God's talking to Adam and Eve, and they say, what happened? Well, the woman you, so you, you're naked and ashamed. Who told you that? Hmm. God says to them, who told you that? Uh, that's, I often think we should ask ourselves that question. When we think something about ourselves to say, who told me that? Yeah. Where did that information come from? Because if it's from God, we know it's positive. We know it's about how he created us to be originally. If it's negative, it's either our own poor self-talk or it's from the enemy. Yeah. And Karen and I have actually have gotten to the place where we'll look at each other sometimes and, and I'll say something and, and, it's, and Karen will say, who told you that? I'll go, oh, yeah, yeah, that wasn't, <laughs> yeah. It's right? awesome. So, yeah. So good. Um, <clears throat> I wanted to go back to something that you said earlier about uh, not seeing the, the Old Testament and the New Testament as separate. Um, it's interesting because anytime we decide to write a sermon or share something from the Old Testament, there's so much... Um, context that is necessary. There's so much um, understanding of, you know, we're not under Levitical law like the like the Hebrews were. And um, even the conversation where you get into the New Testament where, you know, Gentiles are included. Um, do you not find it necessary when you're going through the Old Testament to, to dive into all of that? Because we have an understanding that the Old Testament is something that we can learn from and there is valuable things to be taught from it, but the context is a little different, right? And maybe the principles that, that the Jewish people got from these stories and these commandments are a little bit different than um, us in 2021 reading, 2022, wow, reading all this. Yeah, uh, that's why I, I love that saying, Scripture informs Scripture. Yeah. Because you can go back... And, and I didn't feel like in telling the story of Gideon, it was important to try to frame that in uh, the time frame it was yeah. or to get into Levitical law and all that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. Uh, because I, what I was really looking for are principles that apply to Arbor. Yeah. And, and then just to be able to have other scripture that buttresses those principles so mm-hmm. that when we say, hey, listen, if you really want God to do, to do impossible things through you that seem impossible, you mm-hmm. have to fight the battle his way. Yeah. Okay, well, that was very obvious for Gideon Mm -hmm. because his way was really clear and really, really different. Is it the same for us? So Mm -hmm. now we go to the New Testament and say, oh, yeah, this Mm -hmm. is how Jesus gives us instructions. He tells Mm -hmm. us the Holy Spirit's going to lead us in doing those things. So I'm sure Brian will cover part of that next week. Can I I throw another curveball question at you? Mm -hmm. When it comes to the fleece and Gideon's test, you know, Wet, dry. Uh, as you were going over that, I, every time I've heard that story, I've I've thought about uh, Satan attempting to tempt Jesus in the desert, uh, and Jesus saying, uh, "Do not test the Lord your God." Right. And I wanted to ask you, how do those two fit together? <laughs> Good question. Good <laughs> question. Good question. I don't even know. Okay. Right. Because, <laughs> because, but God. I think, I think it's a matter of the heart. Mm-hmm. I really do. Because God understands our heart, and that's what he's concerned about. So he, he allowed Gideon to do that because he knew Gideon's heart wasn't to test him. Yeah. It was to be certain he was, he was doing the right thing. Yeah, Jesus didn't have that issue. Right. Satan's was, <laughs> right. was a whole was different intention. Clear. Yeah, yeah. And I think it's the same for us, right? If we are just doing it to, to test God, but if we're doing it because we really don't know, I mean, I'm, I'm praying right now about a, a things in my life that I'm, I see down the road that I'm, at, I'm, I'm curious as to what kind of fleece I can lay out to make sure I am following the Holy Spirit in those things. For sure. and, and at this point, I don't even know what that is. Yeah. So I think you can even pray about that. But the purpose for doing it isn't so I can go, oh, check, now I can test God in this or test God. No, it's so that... Lord, I need to know it's you telling me to do this, not me trying to figure out what the, what's the best way for me or how to coerce the circumstances. Yeah. I think the fleece 
um, laying is a really great decision making tool. Yes. For some of these big uh, pivotal moments, like a Gideon moment. Um, I did play a joke. I don't know if you probably remember this, but um, it, we used to work with a former pastor who had a big uh, and he just kept saying, I, I'm just waiting for a fleece, is the way that mm-hmm. he said it. The fleece fabric, white fleece mm-hmm. fabric. I stuck it in the top, closed it. I stuck it under his windshield wiper. I stuck it on the <laughs> urinal. I stuck it er- almost everywhere he went on that thing. I was like, dude, you've got your fleece. You've got it. <laughs> yeah. but, I mean, so, joke too. It but, can be. Yeah. It's awesome. But I think it is, it is helpful before a big decision to say, you know, either a timeline thing like, Lord, I need to. I would love to hear from you by Friday before I go ahead. Stop me. If you know, there's any way you want me to stop from making this decision. Friday's like your day, you know, <laughs> and then to work with a timeline or something and allow him to work or speak or yes. prompt or nudge or whatever. Um, not to prove that he's God, like, Hey, I need a rainbow in the sky right. by Friday. And then I'll know the answer is mm. Yes. Like, it's not mystical like that. It's more like, I want you to weigh in on this decision, Lord. If it really is from you, I don't want to go ahead if you're not for me in this. So, like, I'm going to give you every way possible to prevent me from this, you know. Yes, making a mistake in this. Yeah, yeah. close that door yeah. if you want it closed. Yeah, mm. that's great. I, I didn't even think about it until you're saying that, but really bring it all back around perspective to what we originally talked about today as far as I don't want this to be about me. Yeah. Mm. God, I want you to be leading this. Yeah. Mm. Right. So, so will you say show something. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And that's a mm. great differentiation, isn't it? Because yeah. if we're if our heart is there then I think God wants to answer that. Mm, if cool. we're doing it to manipulate him, yeah. mm. then he goes, uh, you, what, do you think I'm that dumb? You know, I, <laughs> yeah. Right, like yeah. a little magician in the sky, like, right. oh, okay, I'm going to make right. a rainbow for you now be, so that you know to get a taco, not a tostada, you know, <laughs> right. or whatever. It's right. like, this is right. not what it's about. Is yeah. it almost lunchtime? <laughs> <laughs> you can tell it's on my mind right now. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> Well, uh, I have a question for all of you, but I'll start with Cliff since I think he's the most prepared for it. But prepare yourselves, Allison and Michael. Um, This message was all about impossible possibilities and celebrating our fifth birthday. So, um, and we don't typically get a chance to just, uh, I don't know, have a free flowing, here's what's on our heart, on our mind to our congregation, just because we kind of structure things in more of a formal um, setting. But Cliff, what is something that you would say to someone who calls Arbor home, who over the past couple of years, um, Sunday mornings at Arbor haven't been what they used to be, right? Or they haven't looked the same way. Um, what is the encouragement or even just the, the sentiment that you would like to express to someone who is going through that process right now of, yeah. um, I miss what it used to be. This isn't what I expected it to be. Um, what can you share with me, um, to, to, I guess, help me take heart and, and keep the, the good fight going. Yeah. I think, um, that if we, as a body of believers, if the, if Arbor can change our perspective of we're going through tough times Mm -hmm. to, we are the group that God's calling Mm -hmm. to be part of something that is impossible, that seems impossible and he's going to make it possible. Mm -hmm. I believe that those 300 guys for just the experience they had together, they would have 40 years later seen each other and gone, man, do you remember when? Dude, we were we were there. It was us that, that got to be part of that incredible thing that God did. Do you remember that? Mm-hmm. And they would never forget that. They would always have that kind of sense of camaraderie because of what they had been through mm-hmm. and seeing God do this impossibly great thing. Mm-hmm. And so for, from my perspective, I just feel like, Man, if we as a body of believers can say, that's us right now. We got our hand up. We're, we're in this, Lord. Mm-hmm. Now we can begin to look around and go, this is going to be exciting. Mm-hmm. Let's be part of this together so that, that 15 years from now, five years from now, 10 years from now, we can be looking at each other going, yeah, do you remember our fifth birthday? 
And when that kind of thing started to just change and God started to do amazing things, yeah. and, and when we do that as a body, then we're less concerned about, God, who are you going to bring to lead us? Because whoever God brings to lead us is not Jesus. Mm-hmm. And if we think he is, mm-hmm. and that's what we, <laughs> then we put that burden on him, he's not going to last long. Mm-mm. And so we or want, we're not, or we're not right. <laughs> yeah. Right. Now so his I name guess could be Jesus. The, so, yeah. So making, right, the, you know, that out. so that those are yeah. some of the things that can look impossible, but mm-hmm. I believe God's on that right mm-hmm. now. And so we're praying for those kinds of things. So that's my deal. Okay. Allison or Michael. Yeah, Great uh, for the audio listeners to hear just pounding. Oh, the yeah, that rock, paper, scissors. I forgot there's an audio side of things. Um, <laughs> Then they're going to really be like, what did he do when he yeah. was doing the whole Silence thing. warrior pop, pop, pop. guy yeah. thing? He was, hiding in the, he was hiding. <laughs> he was shaking his head off from the water. Yeah. Um, That's funny. Uh, Yeah, if, if, if I was to interact with someone, if I let me make sure I heard the question correctly. Mm-hmm. Yeah. If someone came to me and said, you know what, we don't do what we used to do, mm-hmm. and I just feel like... Yeah, we Thanks. don't. Arbor doesn't look or feel like it used to. Um, I'm kind of questioning. Uh, is this still where I should call uh, my church home? Church home, right? Is this where I should be? Um, it just doesn't feel the same. I'm I'm losing heart. You know that. Kind yeah. Of, that kind of. Well, I, um, I would I would be interested in a conversation with that person. Mm-hmm. Honestly, I, I would say, you know what, if you've got like a, either a lunch or if if timing's hard breakfast yeah. or I'd be willing to pull away for dinner and I just want to talk and just mm-hmm. kind of find out where they're coming from and hear mm-hmm. their heart. Yeah. Hear what possible expectations, because yeah. I, I personally think that those things are uh, I think God blesses us with with a, a, yeah. a vision of what could be. Yeah. To be per- to be honest. Mm-hmm. And maybe the timing wasn't right or what have yeah. you, or maybe they are even being prompted to possibly mm-hmm. lead something yeah. with the group. I don't know. But I, I believe a conversation is in order in that place. And I would want to talk to them and just hear where they're coming from. And if nothing else, if the conversation even happened to go to a place where it was like, you know what, this might be the time to check mm-hmm. out another home yeah. church. Uh, bless mm-hmm. them in that process mm-hmm. and say, you know, it's okay, mm-hmm. you know, yeah. or if it's, it's actually, no, that's not where I'm at. Mm-hmm. I do want to see these things unfold. Well, we just went through a year of healing mm-hmm. and now we're in a place where we're poised to mm-hmm. really go make an impact in the community. So let's yeah. talk. Let's and do I this. I think what's so important to remember from what you just said is um, sometimes it can be this way, but healing and rest are not the same thing, right? So you go through a year of healing and you might notice, yeah, these issues have been resolved, but you might not feel refreshed after that year of healing. It might be quite the opposite, right? When people go through counseling or therapy, it's like, no, this is going to be a hard 30 minutes of conversation, right? And I think that's what this year has been for a lot of people is they didn't, they didn't hit the the mark of, okay, these aren't issues anymore. And just said, I'm rearing ready to go. It's, you know, I'm, I am a little bit tapped on energy, but I do have reserves. Like God has has filled those reserves for me. It's such a good point. I I can't. I've been to counseling before, and I mm-hmm. I know coming out of a hour long session where I've just been bawling my eyes out yeah. for an hour, <laughs> I'm mm-hmm. like, man, I'm tapped on energy. Yeah. I could use an enchilada. Yeah. Right now. <laughs> Toast you. Uh, it's right. Yeah. But after having something to eat, you know, I f- I'm in a place where clearing mm-hmm. all that business out, I'm yeah. like, you know what, though? I'm I'm ready to go love somebody. Yeah. So I think that's yeah. really cool. Your turn, Allison. Well, I, I think I was going to dovetail a little bit on what Michael had said. I, I was going to skip the meal yeah. <laughs> invitation part. I like to eat. <laughs> but <laughs> but uh, my, my gut had said uh, if somebody were to come and say, this isn't like the same as it was. Mm -hmm. And so it's hard for me to find the same feeling of being here again, or I don't know if this is my place anymore. I would encourage them to look at this small church Mm -hmm. um, as an actual bonus. And Mm -hmm. this is coming from a girl who was raised decades. I Mm -hmm. mean, I'm a thousand years old and almost all of them have been spent in in a big church. Yeah. Tons of programs, tons of leaders, mm-hmm. you know, the 
leadership structure already in place and the mm-hmm. whole the whole meal deal. And I am finding a simplicity and a beauty worshiping in a small church mm-hmm. it, as being very refreshing and also available for new leadership. So like if you've always dreamed of like, I want to have a, a ministry for, you know, fill in the blank. Yeah. It's like, Let's talk about you leading that. <laughs> mm-hmm. And yeah. not to say like in a scary thing, like, well, mm-hmm. lead it or, you know, goodbye. Yeah. It's more like what if God is about to do something in your life in, on a leadership level yeah. that a big church never would have afforded you that opportunity. Yeah. Like maybe this is the starting place for you to step into your calling in mm-hmm. a way that a big church never Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Size that we are mm-hmm. and being the stage that we are. Yeah. That can be fertile ground for growth. Mm-hmm. So I, I, I find it exciting. Yeah, I do too. I find it exhilarating. Mm-hmm. Yes. And if it has to do with food, let me know. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, during this whole thing, I was thinking of um, a particular person, and the person that came to mind was. Um, Catherine Klein, someone who um, came to Arbor as the church that she worked for was shutting down and did shut down. Mm -hmm. And my first impression when I heard about her story is, how are you back at a church already and volunteering so heavily, right? Um, To be a staff member, to go through the process of um, seeing a church that you've been at for so long shut down, my initial advice to someone like that, or even if I was in that situation is you should probably just go take a break from, you know, <laughs> being at a church on a Sunday because you've been required to do that for so long. And then also just attend a church and, and be filled. Right. Um, and I think that through my conversations with Catherine and, and what I would recommend to people is being honest and, and, uh, asking the Lord for discernment. Right. Because I, a hundred percent believe that Catherine was following God through that whole process. And I think that as hard as it is to hear, it makes that process easier when you are following God's plan and what he has for you. So you can go through a situation where your church does shut down. Right. And then you just hop right back into serving with another church. As a side note, the way that Catherine stepped in was with baby steps, yeah. right? She didn't all of a sudden become, you know, the grand poobah or anything. Yeah. She started by sorting groceries in our food yeah. bank by herself on Tuesday afternoons, mm-hmm. all by herself because yeah. it was a COVID friendly um, yeah. volunteer experience. And she did that for hours and mm-hmm. weeks before then taking on some financial help for us because yeah. she had bookkeeping experience. Yeah. That again fit her framework. She wasn't leading a team. She mm-hmm. wasn't overextending on any way. So I think she was slowly healing mm-hmm. from her past mistake. Or yeah. not mistake, but past experience. Yes. Yeah. Before stepping great gr- gradually mm-hmm. into greater and greater opportunities. Yeah. So it's like start somewhere. Like yeah. everybody's got a starting place. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, I follow what the Lord mm-hmm. is yeah. showing and it's, you. It's a total God thing because on a human superficial level, I wouldn't I personally, Hayden, would not want to leave a church that just shut down to a church that's going through some real messy, hard things, right? I would want to go find the church that is thriving financially and has all these great things going for it because I can just say, hey, I can hop in, no stress, no drama, and and, and be a person who might serve or attend. Exactly, right? Because you're like, yeah. slip in, slip out, nobody's going to exactly. ask anything yeah. of me. But I think that's where the whole, you know, discern discernment and honesty comes in because like Michael had kind of said, sometimes God does call us away to be a part of something else and um, you know, no love lost or anything like that. Blessings. The welcome Matt is yeah, always out exactly, here if you want right? to come back. And I but, think, yeah. I think it's fair to say one more thing that you're talking about. <laughs> if, if you are in a season of, of needing rest, mm-hmm. that's okay too. Yeah, for sure. Like, you know, like I know when Hallie and I, when we had our third and he was just a little guy and we were not getting much rest, we needed a season where we were like, no, we need to not be serving for a little bit. And yep. if the body of Christ is working the way that it was designed and intended, there are parts of the body that 
step, step aside up. and like they rest. Yeah. And then meanwhile, other parts step in, in. Yeah. yeah, and support and do heavy, heavier lifting for yeah. a time. And then you know what? They're going to need to rest too. Like yeah. mm-hmm. if we're all doing what God has designed us to do and we're obedient, prompting he's got it all figured out he'll totally. work it all out yep I that's love it. where it, let god pick the team yeah 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 all right well we are well over our time so <laughs> let's let's close things out um uh anything else you guys uh need to say or share before we close out <laughs> that was your happy birthday kazoo um Well, thank you guys for listening or watching the follow-up podcast, and we'll see you guys next week.